What's up guys? My name is Harmon. Today's video takes place in a very small town called Crandon, Wisconsin. This is extremely far up north Wisconsin, um, almost to the Michigan border. In the very early morning hours of October 7th, 2007, 20-year-old Tyler Peterson, who worked as a deputy sheriff, stormed his ex-girlfriend's house, went inside and shot and killed her and five other people. Uh, he ended up killing six people inside the apartment, all because his ex-girlfriend wouldn't get back together with him before he left and had a hideout at a cabin north of Crandon here, um, where he ultimately uh, was shot by police, not fatally, just injuring him, but he, he ended up taking his own life at the cabin. I wanted to fill you guys in with the details, of course, uh, who was killed, their ages, and again, show you this nice memorial that they built here. Um, this is actually the site of the apartment complex um, that they turned into the memorial. So I'm actually standing where, where it all happened. Um, it's kind of weird to think, but I'm basically standing in where their apartment was and where they're all shot and killed. Alright guys, um, as always with all my videos, if you're new around here, um, not only do I talk about the crime, I actually go to where it all happens, and I give you guys the victims' names and ages, um, because they're the ones, again, that need to be remembered, and uh, so that is why in every video I always try my best to make sure I name off the, the people who died and their ages. The people who were killed were Jordan Murray. Um, she was 18 years old. She was the ex-girlfriend of Tyler Peterson. Katrina McCorkle, she was 18. Liana Faye Thomas was 17. Bradley Schultz was 20. Aaron Smith was 20. And Lindsay Stahl was 14. Uh, so those are the six uh, victims who were shot and killed by Tyler Peterson. Uh, There's actually seven people total in the apartment that night. Uh, the seventh person was shot, but they were able to basically pretend to be dead and they were able to crawl out of there and get help. Um, so the seventh person was, was basically the only lucky one. They survived um, just barely though. Um, so give you guys a little background on Tyler Peterson. Um, again, he was 20 years old when he committed the murders here. He was hired on at the Forest County Sheriff's Department uh, when he was 19. So he had only been at the Sheriff's Office about, about a year when he committed these murders. He also worked part-time at the Crandon Police Department as an officer as well. So he worked full-time at the Forest County Sheriff's Department and he worked uh, part-time as an officer at the Crandon Police Department right here in town. So the actual events, Jordan Murray, she just recently broken up with Tyler Peterson. Um, they had been dating for about four years, quite a while, but uh, again, they were still both really young. He was two years older than her. Uh, local residents state that Tyler Peterson was verbally and physically abusive towards, towards Murray, which you always wonder like if that's true, then how did both of the police departments, how did they end up hiring him? Um, there was no psychological test um, required at that time, so he basically just got hired on to both police departments. They should have done some thorough background checks probably because he obviously was not in a very stable mindset. Um, so several days before the murders took place on October 7th, Tyler had been leaving numerous, numerous voicemails, text messages to Jordan, um, basically pleading to get her back and stated he wanted to come over and work it out. Um, and she replied that she needed some more time. But that that did not sit well with, with Tyler. Um, he ended up going to the apartment complex, which is right here. He went here anyway. Um, 2.30 in the morning, October 7th, he showed up here at the apartment, started pounding on the door, um, asking to be let in. So Tyler made his way inside uh, and saw Aaron sitting next to his ex-girlfriend, Jordan on the couch. Um, and again, this is based on the only surviving witness, 
uh, he said that Jordan and Aaron were sitting on the couch next to each other. Tyler, so Tyler started screaming at Jordan, basically accusing her of sleeping with Aaron, um, even though they were just sitting next to each other. And to be honest, if they were, it shouldn't have mattered because they were, because Tyler and Jordan were broken up. So regardless, it shouldn't have mattered. Jordan, of course, then told Tyler to leave because he was getting super upset. Uh, he actually hit her um, and then he left. They then locked the door after he left. Uh, so Tyler walked outside to his car, picked up his AR, um, several different magazines, and then returned back to the apartment. Apparently the AR was issued to him by the sheriff's department. So it was his rifle that he used with the sheriff's department. So it doesn't stay in the article, but it, it sounds like Tyler must have broken down the door because they locked it after he left initially. So when he, when he returned, he must have broken down the door and started shooting. Um, and again, uh, shot and killed all six people uh, out of the seven that were there. Jordan's father actually lived in the apartment complex. So he actually heard the shooting and saw Tyler run out of the apartment and get into his truck. Um, so Jordan's father actually was the one who called 911 and stated that Tyler Peterson, the cop, he, he shot and killed everyone. Now that is what he told the 911 operator. So Jordan Murray was killed in the kitchen. Uh, Katrina was killed in one of the bedrooms. Uh, Liana was uh, basically killed. Uh, she was hiding in a closet and she was killed in the closet. Um, Aaron and Bradley were both shot and killed in the living room. So it sounds like they all they all were in different parts of the house. Um, they must have tried to hide initially. Unfortunately, it didn't quite work. Um, after Tyler shot and killed everyone, he left and he, he made his way to a friend's cabin about I think 20 miles or so north of Crandon here. Um, he hid out there for basically kind of like the day. Um, the police eventually tracked him down to the cabin. Um, they gave him chances to surrender. Um, he, Tyler wanted to make a plea deal right then and there. They of course said no. Uh, Tyler then ran out of the cabin. Uh, he was shot a couple times. Uh, by the responding officers, um, not fatally, um, just injuring him. Uh, he then eventually got out his gun and shot himself in the head, um, killing himself right there. So just a, a sad chain of events, um, all because Tyler couldn't, couldn't handle Jordan not being with him and couldn't handle her being potentially with someone else. Um, so all these people had to die just because Tyler's, Tyler couldn't control his rage and his emotions. Which again brings us back to how come pl both police departments decided to hire him? Um, how come they didn't do more of a thorough background on him? It's hard to say, but it sounds like they didn't really have the same kind of testing that they probably do now. Um, it's just sad. It seems like seems like he was uh, basically like a, a ticking time bomb basically like it seemed like he just had so much emotion and rage that something eventually would have happened um, it's just it's just sad that it that it came down to this um, so anyway so I'll show you guys the memorial here um, each section has one of the victims names so again just a very beautiful nice nice setting
And not only do they have the picture of each person and talks about them in, inside the little gazebo, they also have each person has like their own bench and then even some people put some bricks down and set some stuff, so pretty cool. All right, anyway guys, uh, I'm gonna wrap this up. Um, thank you so much for watching. Um, this was one that it just, when I heard the story, um, it just was intriguing and of course sad and I was like, well this just, it's just one that I feel like I have to do. Um, I had no idea about this memorial that would be here. I was actually thinking that I'd be filming an apartment complex. So I'm actually glad that they tore it down and this is in its place because something like this, is way more touching and and respectful I think and keeping their memories alive rather than just seeing some you know boring building so I don't know just my thoughts but anyway guys thank you so much for watching if you're new around here um, consider hitting subscribe uh, it's free and uh, it'll keep you up to date on all my videos if you like the crime related content that is that is what I do so if you like that kind of stuff stick around Hit subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one. All right, guys, thanks for watching. My name's Harmon. See you on the next one.